So for chapter 11, uh, we're going to learn about this um, organic compound called amines. So bila sebut amines ni, dia masih ada uh, organic part which um, is the hydrocarbon, carbon and hydrogen. But we have nitrogen. Okay, kenapa nama dia amine? Okay, nama dia amine sebab dia ada nitrogen tu dan, dan uh, selama ni kita belajar are you pregnant man catcher? Just, just substituents on the carbon chain, right? On the carbon. Okay, bila kita ada nitrogen, okay, nitrogen atas nitrogen pun kita boleh ada substituents juga. Okay, so itu ada sikit lah yang kita akan um, buat lain sikit in terms of its nomenclature. Okay, under this 11.0 amines, we have five subtopics altogether. The 11.1 is just the introductions to know um, what is this amine. And then 11.2 nomenclature, 11.3 is physical properties, 11.4 is the uh, preparations of amine and last one is chemical properties. Okay, saya nak cakap sekejap siap untuk amine ni, dia ada sikit lah perbezaan dari awak buat uh, chemical reactions before this. Dia beza tu dari segi apa? Dia beza satu naming dia ada beza sikit in terms of aliphatic dan aromatic pun agak berbeza. Tak banyak beza lah sikit je. Lepas tu dia punya chemical properties pun ada perbezaan juga. Hmm. Selama ni kita buat reaction kalau aliphatic, aromatic, semua sama. Tapi yang ni in terms of classes pun dah lain. So tu kena hati-hati sikit lah. Dia tak susah. Cuma ni awak kena tahu dia nak form apa. Okay. So uh, as for the introductions, you need to know what is meant by this amine. So amine is basically organic derivatives of ammonia. Asalnya dia adalah ammonia. So this um, nitrogen is from group 15. Bila group 15, kita kena ada five valence electrons around it. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Sebab itulah kita kata dia dari ammonia, dia akan tukar, tukar, tukar jadi apa. Dia tak boleh lebih daripada ni sebab dia kena octet. We have two, four, six and eight and it comply with the fifteen, uh, the five valence electron. One, two, three, four and five. Okay, since this is only ammonia when they have hydrogen, Kalau kita ada uh, this hydrogen to be substituted with one alkyl group, kita akan start panggil dia amine. Okay, kita boleh ganti lagi sebab dia kata with one or more alkyl groups. Kalau kita ganti dua, this is what we call amine. Kalau kita ganti all three, kita panggil dia amine juga. Okay. Boleh beza ammonia dengan amine? Boleh bis. Okay, and then so on this nitrogen, we know we have this lone pair electrons. Okay, sebab ada lone pair electrons, kita tahu this lone pair electrons, they are highly reactive. Okay, dan kita juga kenal, when we do the reactions, we need to have nucleophile and electrophile. When you have extra electrons and they are highly reactive instead of having only bond in here, maksudnya, they tend to become nucleophile or electrophile. Kalau ada lone pair. Nucleophile. Yes, nucleophile. Yes. Before this, kita belajar uh, hydrocarbon, benzene, what else? Um, uh, apa kita panggil tu? The haloalkane and then alcohol. Semua tu dia rely on carbon, right? Carbon. So carbon semua tak uh, hanya ada single bond. Dia tak ada pun long time ni. Sebab tu dia tak boleh attack. Unless dia ada double bond, dia baru boleh attack. Most of the time, organic compound yang kita dah belajar before this, dia akan jadi electrophile yang di attack. Sebab dia tak ada this lone pair. Okay, bila masuk amine, sebab dia ada this lone pair lah membuatkan amine ni uh, tend to be the nucleophile and bila dia nucleophile, dia banyak elektron. That's why dia ada basic character. Okay, basic tu sebab dia tahu ada elektron lah base. Okay, and the chemistry of amine that we're going to learn throughout this topic will be dominated by the non-bonded electron. Non-bonded ni kita sebut electron pair ni lah. Reactions dia akan berlaku pada ni. So awak akan tengok nanti kita belajar physical properties. Uh, kalau acidity, kita cakap nak bagi hydrogen, uh, yang ni dia yang nak ambil hydro, uh, hydrogen sebab dia kuat. So apa apa reactions yang akan berlaku, dia akan take space dekat this part. So kita akan jadi the nucleophile yang takes uh, something else from others. Macam before this kan nucleophilic substitution lah, nucleophile masuk. Sekarang ni dia yang nucleophile. Okay. Okay. So for amines itself, 
Okay, kita ada juga classes of amine. Before kita ada classes of alcohol, kita ada classes of um, alkal halide. But it all uh, depends on the alkyl group. Okay, alkyl group or aryl group attached to the carbon. But this time for amine, we're going to look at the alkyl or aryl group attached to nitrogen. Bukan pada carbon, tapi pada nitrogen. Ha, tu ada beza sikit. So, sama juga. Primary pun ada satu alkyl group. Secondary ada dua alkyl group. Tertiary ada tiga alkyl group. But the alkyl group, kita tengok attached to the nitrogen. Bukan pada carbon. Clear kan yang ni? So, nak, nak senang nampak. Mm -hmm. Yes, buka sikit dekat nitrogen tu, tunjuk sikit bonding dia supaya kita nampak berapa banyak alkyl group attached to it. Okay, next one. 11.2 nomenclature. We have a few cases. Okay, uh, usually when giving common names, kita akan guna common names yang memang dah sedia ada. Okay, tapi untuk admin, kita boleh generate, auto-generate sendiri. Macam mana? Okay, so the name, uh, the common names untuk admin, kita akan ambil je alkyl group Okay, uh, instead of ambil alkin, kita akan tengok siapa carbon keliling dia, kita akan assume sebagai alkyl group and then simply uh, followed by amine dekat belakang. Kiranya, once you ada nitrogen, confirm itu adalah amine. Uh, nak tahu siapa alkyl group, tengok siapa yang keliling dia. Okay, let's say we have this compound. When you have N, means kita ada amine tak? Yes. Okay, so now how many alkyl group attached to this amine at the moment? Ada berapa alkyl group attached to this amine at the moment? One is. Okay, one. One. okay maksudnya satu je alkyl group. Apa nama alkyl group kita? Ada berapa carbon? Tiga carbon. Tiga. So kalau tiga carbon, the alkyl group should be? Propyl amine. Yes. So the common name for this compound is propyl amine. Yes, betul. Ini untuk common name eh, sebab are you packed lain sikit. So this simply macam ni je. So kita try dulu buat yang ni. Okay, what if we have this compound? How many alkyl group directly attached to this end? One. One. What is the name of this brief, uh, of this Prefix. This is a branch alkyl group. One, two, three. Propyl. Yes. So, nama dia? Iso. Isopropyl. Yes. Isopropyl. I mean. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ni masih primary. Sebab satu sahaja. Okay. Next one. We now have nitrogen. On the nitrogen, we have three alkyl group. Okay, bila three alkyl group means the classes of amine is? Tertiary. Tertiary. So when you have tertiary, okay, just now kita cakap alkyl groups bonded to N. Letak je. Sekarang ni we have two of the uh, two of them sama, satu lain. Okay, when naming compound, you still need to follow the alphabet. So you have methyl and ethyl. When you have more than one, then you need to use the prefix. Okay, jadi sekarang ni siapa yang awak nak letak dulu? Ethyl or methyl? Ethyl. Ethyl. So the name of this compound should be? Samong je. Tak payah letak nombor. Kita tak ada nombor pun sekarang. Ethyl. Ethyl dimethyl amine. Yes. Ethyl dimethyl amine. Okay eh. Okay, bukanlah saya kata tak ada nombor ni salah bukan. Uh, sekarang ni bila common ni memang kita terus je letak. Kita letak macam ni. Nanti IUPAC baru kita akan uh, letak nombor, locations dia. Okay, this one. This um, amine is uh, has a class of primary, secondary or tertiary? Secondary. Secondary. So, what is the name or what is the common name of this compound? Diethyl amine. Yes, diethyl amine. Okay, habis dah ke? Ha, saya rasa habis dah untuk yang common name. So, kita practice macam tu je lah. Okay, now kita nak tengok IUPAC pula. Untuk IUPAC, dia punya basic still sama as in uh, previous uh, previous chapters. Okay, but then, uh, bearing in mind that 
you got, uh, since you are going to have usually in one compound you have only one uh, one functional group so kalau kita ada n dekat dalam kita punya functional group apart from c dengan h kita akan panggil dia amin Okay, as for the longest carbon chain, kita akan buang dari alkene to become alkan. So, nama dia akan jadi alkanamin. Okay, eh. Kalau, com kalau compound ni, kalau kita just nak bagi dia punya parent chain dulu. The first step dulu, alkanamin. Kalau dalam case ni, kita akan dapat four carbons. Butane. Okay, butane. Tapi kalau dah ada amin, Nama dia? Butanamin. Yes. Nama dia butanamin lah. Tadi butal butal amin tu common name now kita buat ayupat. Ayupat still kena tengok parent chain. Kan? Betul tak? Ayupat? Yes, miss. Okay. So ni basic dulu. Saya pun nak buat step by step. So the first step, kita akan tengok the longest carbon chain. Okay, butane. And then, kita ada N dekat dia. Jadi nama dia butanamin. The first part. Okay, so butanamin dulu. Okay, the second step, okay, look for the uh, apa ni, positions of your amin ke, carbon ke. Okay, sekarang ni awak akan ada start daripada amin ni, kita akan ada dua possibility. Sama ada substituents on the carbon or substituent on the nitrogen. Okay, kalau sekarang case kita ni, substituent on the carbon ke on the nitrogen? On the nitrogen. Eh, ni lah ni ni carbon. Yang ni betul lah satu tak apa. Dia asalkan dia attach to satu, okay memang dia kena jadi alkanamin. Maksudnya kita dapatlah amin kita. Amin tak boleh, tak boleh um, apa ni, carbon, N sahaja. Dia sama hal ada benda ni. So kat sini awak tengok, this carbon chain you got at carbon number two ada carbon ada nitrogen right. Dekat nitrogen Memang ada satu je carbon. So kita panggil dia kat sini, nombor dia kat sini lah. Sebab NH2 ni dia boleh buat positional isomers. So dia tak semestinya kena duduk ujung. Okay ke yang tu? Okay. okay. So uh, bila awak tengok dekat parent chain awak, ada tak substituent? So kita tengok dekat parent chain kita ada satu substituent carbon, satu substituent nitrogen. So kita kena letak nombor. Apa sahaja yang melekat pada parent chain, kita letak nombor. So dekat sini we have two. Two untuk N, two untuk C. Itu boleh? Boleh. Okay. So kalau kat sini nama dia akan jadi apa? Two metal. Okay, you have two metal. Lepas tu yang N ni, sebab kita kata tadi N akan jadi dia punya uh, family kan? How do we treat the family before kalau dia ada positional isomers? Let's say you have OH. Uh, kalau OH kat carbon number 2, you panggil dia 2 butanol, right? Kalau ni? 2 amin. Butanol. 2 amin lah. Tadi kita ada butanamin, so dia akan jadi? 2 butanamin. Yes, so kalau ada 2 metal, means nama dia 2 metal, 2 butanamin. Okay, yang tu? Okay. Okay, now kita tengok lagi satu. Um, if uh, yang tadi tu, kalau kita ada substituents on the carbon chain. Now, if you have substituents, okay, apart from only one carbon yang tadi, kita ada lagi satu. One, uh, another hydrogen on the nitrogen will be substituted with alkyl group kita maksudnya akan ada substituents on nitrogen. Kalau ada substituents on nitrogen, you must put the location as N. Bukan nombor tapi N sahaja. Okay, so the prefix N is used to show the positions of other substituents on nitrogen atom. Okay, as for aliphatic, okay, ini untuk aliphatic N. Bila aliphatic compound, kita akan letakkan N after the numeric locants. Maksudnya lepas nombor. Maksud lepas nombor ni, kalau awak ada uh, the same substituents, let's say metal, okay, metal on on the nitrogen and also on the carbon chain, kita akan letak yang carbon chain punya position dulu. Baru kita letak N. Itu faham tak? Contohnya awak ada metal dekat nitrogen, metal dekat uh, carbon chain of 4 tadi. Okay, contoh kita kata 2 metal. 
Takkan kita nak cakap tu metal and metal kan? Kita mesti akan berhubung prefix right? Yes. Kita akan letak die kan? Kalau ada metal dua kita akan letak die kan? Betul. Yes. So kita akan jadikan dia tu and tu comma and dash die metal macam tu. Maksudnya kita bagi tahu numeric locans dulu baru non numeric locans. Non numeric adalah yang atas nitrogen. Kalau numeric adalah atas karbon nombor. Itu kalau kes aliphatic. Okay so contohnya kita ada this compound. This compound here, you have this, um, the longest carbon chain, okay, kita tengok kita ada NH, longest carbon chain of berapa? Three. Three eh? One, two, three. No, saya silap bagi nama dia. Okay, tak apa. Hmm, saya silap. Saya nampak dia dua. Patutnya tiga, betul-betul. One, two, three. Okay, ni silap lah. Tak, tak sesuai lah jadi yang ni. Kalau ikut yang ni, one, two, three, nama dia metaprop. Two propanamine. Dia just ada N ital je lah kan. Patutnya ini adalah sekejap eh. N ital tu propanamin. Dia tak sesuai untuk yang ni. Apalah nanti saya kita buat ni. Propanamin. Okay. Tapi awak clear lah untuk sebab tadi kita akan buat soalan lagi tak apa. Untuk aliphatic. Untuk aromatic pula, okay, aromatic means you have benzene ring directly attached to it we have nitrogen like this. Okay, since we have this benzene ring means we are going, to, we have already learned about the benzene and its derivative. Bila ada benzene ring directly attached to nitrogen and tak ada lagi dah um, possible functional group present. Jadi nama dia akan jadi apa kalau ikut common name dia? Benzene with NH2 at, uh, attached to it. Nama dia jadi? Benzene amine. Ah, okay, benzene amine. Benzen. Kalau ikut IUPAC, yang ni kalau common name dia ada satu nama. Contoh macam carboxylic acid attached to benzene, kita panggil benzoic acid. Ah, kalau benzene, aniline. kita panggil dia aniline. Okay, sebab kat sekarang ni awak hanya ada uh, NH2 je as the important functional group. Yang lain ni semua bukan important, lagi bawah pada dia. Okay, so we have this aniline and the numbering will start from carbon number one here, uh, locate, locating this nitrogen. On your carbon number four, we have metal. Jadi, nama dia akan jadi N4 Ah, kenapa nak N? Tak ada dah lah. Kalau dia dah jadi uh, fam parent, family, tak payah dah letak uh, location dia ni. Yang ni memang dia akan ada. For. Okay, for apa? For metal aniline. Yes, for metal aniline. Maksudnya saya nak tekankan kat sini bila aromatic, uh, uh, aromatic amine, kita panggil aniline je lah. Senang. Okay. So, let's say you have non-numeric locken. Kalau tadi numeric locken will be will be placed before the non-numeric. Tapi sekarang ni untuk aromatic kita akan jadi terbalik. Kalau aromatic kita akan place non-numeric dulu baru numbering. Maksudnya n baru nombor. Kalau yang tadi nombor baru n. Tu beza dia. Aliphatic, nombor first then barulah N. Kalau aromatic, N first barulah berubah. Number. Ha, barulah number. Tapi ini untuk case apa? Ini untuk case ni untuk aromatic. case. Yes, aromatic. Tapi dia untuk case yang sama substituents dia. Sebab kalau awak tengok, uh, kalau dia punya alphabet still menang, kena bagi kat alphabet dulu lah. Okay. So kalau case kita ni, Uh, we have this benzene ring kan? Okay, and this benzene ring directly attached to it is nitrogen. Means kita akan assume dia orang ni nama dia aniline, right? Yep. Okay. On the carbon chain, kita akan guna number. On the nitrogens, kita akan guna N. And they all got the same substituents, right? 
Yes. Bila ada same substituents, dia ada dia akan ada konflik. Dia akan ada konflik siapa yang kita dah letak dulu positions dia. So kalau dia aromatic, starts with the end. On your end, we have how many methyl? Two. Two. So we need to mention N two times. Okay, on the carbon chain, we have methyl on oh. carbon number. Two and? Six. Six. So how do you name this compound? N, N, two, six. Tet tetra. Mm -hmm. Methyl aniline. Okay. N, N, two, six tetramethyl aniline. Okay eh? Bila kata non-numeric ke apa, kalau awak ada yang sama lah. Dia kalau contohnya awak ada kat sini ital, kat sini metal. Still kena bagi kat sini dulu ital sebab alphabet. Dia kalau case yang same substituents ni. Okay. Kat dah saya rasa dalam notes tu banyak lagi lah dia punya contoh. Boleh? Beza antara alifatik dengan aromatik? Okay. Okay. Okay miss. Boleh miss. Okay. Itu saja untuk uh, untuk naming dia tapi kalau contohnya you have uh, multiple functional group present in your compound this NH2 dia punya priority akan jadi lagi bawah. Okay macam kita tengok uh, before this in chapter 6 ke chapter 8 selalu saya tunjuk balik the priority table. NH2 ni kalau ada something else contoh hydroxy ke uh, double bond ke dia akan jadi substituent sahaja. Okay so bila dia jadi substituent kita akan panggil dia amino. Okay, amino group sahaja. So, this compound containing OH and NH2, who's got higher priority? OH. So, the number one will be at OH and at number three we have this uh, NH2. So, the name of this compound should be? Apa nama compound ni? 3 amino cyclohexanol. This is benzene ring, right? Yes, miss. Ah, benzene directly attached to OH, kita panggil cyclohexanol ke? Tak. Tak, kita panggilnya. Phenol. So, 3 amino phenol. Okay. Ataupun 3 amino benzene alcohol. Okay, exercise untuk okay. nomenclature. This one, saya nak nama dalam um, IUPAC. The first one here. According to IUPAC, look for the longest carbon chain that hold the nitrogen and then look for the substituent. So the name should be? Isomethyl. Can you know? Isomethyl. Isopropyl. Tak, tak. Sekarang saya nak IUPAC. Oh. Kalau IUPAC, still kena ada longest carbon chain that hold your nitrogen ni. Okay, so sekarang tengok. You have the longest of? Three. Three ke? Two. Betul lah ni three wak. Kalau ni three, nama dia apa? Two propanamine. Two, two propanamine. Ni two propanamine. Okay, yang bawah ni one propanamine sebab dia simpi panjang je. Yang this one? Ha, sekarang ni kita check. Dia walaupun di longest carbon chain, dia tak boleh in between nitrogen. Kita tak boleh kata oh, one, two, three. Ini ada longest carbon chain. Dia kena sama ada macam ni je ataupun macam tu. Dia tak boleh yang ni dah tak kira lah. Sekarang longest carbon chain kita berapa? Propane. One, three. two, tiga kan? Okay, so kita ada propane. And then, on the carbon chain kita ada substituents tak? Ada. Ada. On the nitrogen kita ada substituents tak? Ada. ada. Okay, this is aliphatic or aromatic? Aliphatic. Aromatic. And then we have the same substituents, right? Yeah. Betul. Okay. Who should be mentioned first? The non-numeric or numeric? Kalau aliphatic. Hmm. Non-numeric. Kalau alifatik, numeric or non-numeric? Numeric. Numeric, nombor dulu. Okay, kalau nombor, kita tengok dekat this carbon chain, we have metal at carbon number? Two. 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 On nitrogen, kita akan panggil dia location dia macam mana? N. 
And hey, so nama compound ni apa? Propanamin kita kat carbon number? Two. Two. So namanya two and dimethyl two propanamin. Okay ke yang ni? Sebab dia alif atik kita letak nombor dulu baru N. Kenapa kita letak nombor baru N? Sebab dia orang ni substitute yang sama. So number comes first before the nitro, uh, the N. And then kenapa letak two propanamin? Because the carbon that hold the nitrogen is at carbon number two. So dia boleh buat positional isomers. Okay eh? Okay next one this. Now we have the longest carbon chain of benzene and directly attached to it is N. Means the family should be? Aniline. Aniline. Okay good. On your carbon chain we have two substituents. Are they the same way of, uh, between one another ni? Sama tak? No. Tak sama. Sama. Okay, bila tak sama, tak ada masalah lah. Kita akan ikut alphabet je. What about this one? Nitrogen, atas dia ada metal. Sama tak dengan yang carbon chain tadi? Sama. Okay, if we have the same substituents, how are we supposed to treat um, the locations? Are we going to first mention the number or the nitrogen? The N. Nitrogen. Okay, kita akan mention kalau aromatik, kita akan mention N dulu. So sekarang on your N, kita ada dua metal. Jadi kita akan letak N, N, right? Yeah. Okay, at carbon number two pun kita ada metal. So dia akan jadi N, N, two. Bila tiga, kita nak guna prefix apa? Tri. Tri. So this will become tri metal. What about uh, at carbon number three? We have ethyl. So ethyl and methyl, who comes first? Ital. Ital. So the name of this compound should be? 3-ethyl. 3-ethyl. N2. Huh? N2. Tri. N, N. Kan? N ada dua kan? 1, 2 ni. So kena sebut N, N. Kan? Yeah. N, okay. N2. Try. And two try methyl. Aniline. Aniline. So three ethyl and and two try methyl aniline. Ah. Okay, I got play. Naming me. Boleh Okay, boleh. Ya, kong, uh, kong nak tanya apa? Um, miss, why number one is wrong? Because the longest carbon chain is two, right? Okay, tu betul tapi sebab this um, NH2 sebab dia hanya ada satu je carbon attached to it, right? Means dia akan follow the parent chain, the longest parent chain. Because this NH2 can form positional isomers. So kalau ikutkan, the longest carbon chain is 1, 2, 3. Sebab dia boleh buat positional kan? Dia boleh duduk ujung ni, dia boleh buat ujung ni. Nampak tak kau? Um, still tak faham. Okay. Sekejap, kalau I lukis um, Sekarang ni sebab saya lukis macam tu nampaklah macam ni sikit Contoh kita ada 1, 2, 3 Okay, 3 carbon kan? All together 3 carbon On the second carbon, kita ada hydrogen Kita ada NH2 Kalau saya lukis macam ni, awak bagi nama dia apa? 2 propanamin kan? Yang hijau ni, nampak tak? Kong? Nampak tak yang ni? Kalau sekarang kita ada 1, 2 and 3 Ini just because saya letak Saya pun tak perasan tadi sebenarnya Saya letak macam nampak 1, 2 Okay, terus directly attach But then, the carbon yang directly attach to N tu juga Dia ada satu lagi carbon So, they can form the longest carbon chain here Sebab apa kita boleh buat longest carbon chain 3? Sebab uh, NH2 ni dia boleh, dia macam OH boleh buat positional isomer. Dia tak semestinya kena duduk ujung. Oh, okay. Ah, okay eh. Dia sama je lukisan dia ni. Cuma ni nampak bias sikit lah. Nampak macam street di sini. Subtopic 11.3 physical properties. Okay, as I mentioned before, um, physical properties, you got only three of them. Usually we have physical properties of body points, solubility, uh, and acidity. Okay, but this time around, since we are dealing with ammonia, which characterize the nucleophile, nucleophilic um, reactivity, jadi dia akan bawa 
um, physical properties of basicity instead of acidity. Okay, eh? so, yang tu je lah lain sikit. Okay, yang lain yang selebihnya tu sama saja. Okay, as for boiling point, we know for boiling point, we are going to look at the intermolecular forces. So, um, the molecules that we are going to look at is the amine. Okay, amine kita tahu asalnya NH3 but then uh, once this hydrogen is replaced with alkyl group, jadi dia akan jadi primary uh, amine. Bila kita ganti dengan dua, dia akan jadi secondary amine. Okay. So basically, both primary uh, on your slide here and also secondary can form hydrogen bond. Kenapa dia boleh buat hydrogen bond? Boleh tak? Uh, sesiapa beritahu saya, apa yang ada dekat um, primary and secondary amine yang membolehkan diorang ni ada hydrogen bond between themselves. What are the criteria in this amine that can form hydrogen bond? Ada NH. Okay, ada NH. Okay, HN dan H directly attached to N. Dekat dalam primary amine, kita ada berapa hydrogen directly attached to N? Two. Ada dua. Okay, uh, lepas tu apa lagi? Kalau satu ni ada hydrogen directly attached to N means the other molecule which is primary amine as well should have kalau dia nak buat hydrogen bond HN N2 ah, Bukan, ah, kita dah ada HN dari satu molecule Untuk dia buat hydrogen bond, dia kena ada apa dekat second molecule? Dia kena ada apa? Lone pair Lone pair Okay, that are the two criteria involved when you want to form hydrogen bond. Kena first molecule pertama ada hydrogen directly attached to either FO ataupun N. Yang kedua kena ada lone pair on the neighbouring atom which in our case now boiling point between the same molecules. Okay, jadi since this primary amine, there are the dual hydrogen so the possibility to form hydrogen bond is much um, uh, higher than the secondary amine. Okay, kita tengok eh. Untuk nitrogen hydrogen ni pun boleh buat kalau dia ada molekul lain. Kat sini pun boleh buat lagi. Sini pun boleh buat, sini pun boleh buat. Dia tak cakap dekat um, hydrogen nitrogen sahaja. Dekat nitrogen yang ada lone pair pun boleh juga buat. Okay, cuma saya nak fokuskan pada berapa banyak hydrogen dia sebab kita nak tengok the difference between these two. Okay, walaupun dia orang boleh buat hydrogen bond, siapa yang lagi tinggi ada uh, punya boiling point. Uh, kena tengoklah ke the capability for them to form the hydrogen bond. Banyak ataupun sikit. For secondary um, amine, we have how many hydrogen directly attached to N? One. 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 So, kalau daripada hydrogen directly attached to N, dia boleh bertindak sebagai the molecule yang provide the hydrogen uh, directly attached to either F or N. Okay, kita ada dua. Satu kat sini, dengan satu kat sini. Tetapi nitrogen yang ada lone pair sendiri pun kalau ada molekul yang sama juga kat sebelah dia, dia pun boleh buat lagi. Okay eh. So antara dua ni, siapa yang uh, got uh, more hydrogen bond in them? Uh, primary or secondary amine? Primary. 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 Okay, primary can form more hydrogen bond than the secondary amine. Okay eh. Okay, uh, we know Classes of amine can be up to tertiary. What about tertiary? Kalau tertiary, uh, another hydrogen here will be replaced with um, alkyl group. Okay, maksudnya carbon. If this set tertiary amine and tertiary amine facing towards each other, can they form hydrogen bond between themselves? No. Cannot. Cannot. Walaupun dia ada lone pair on the nitrogen, but then on the molecule of this amine itself, they got no hydrogen directly attached to either FO ataupun N. So, the tertiary amines cannot form hydrogen bond. So, we know the highest boiling point should go to primary amine followed by secondary and lastly baru tertiary. Sebab the, uh, the ability to form hydrogen bond, kalau amine, dia hanya boleh buat Dipole-dipole at most, okay? Sebab dia ada nitrogen and carbon, dia ada polar bond kat sini. So, polar molecule. Alright, itu untuk uh, boiling point lah sikit nak bagi nampak. Okay, but then you also need to know when comparing uh, amine to other compound. Okay, amine sebab dia ada nitrogen directly attached to H, dia still tinggi daripada compound yang hanya ada carbon, hydrogen dan juga uh, halogen. Okay, alkanes and haloalkanes. Sebab dia boleh buat hydrogen bond. These two can only form mm, dipole-dipole. Dipole-dipole dengan yang ni kita boleh buat under forces kiranya van der Waals lah. 
kalau amin pula kita nak compare dengan species with oxygen Okay, species with oxygen kita akan dapat yang amin ni punya lower, bond, uh, lower uh, boiling point lagi rendah daripada uh, species yang ada O macam carboxylic acid and also alcohol. Sebab apa? Sebab amin got nitrogen. Nitrogen is located at carbon eh nitrogen is located at group 15. Okay, oxygen pula group 16. So kalau dia less electronegative maksudnya bond dia pun less polar. Kalau dia less polar means dia punya boiling point pun lagi rendah. Dia punya hydrogen pun pun lagi lemah daripada yang ada oksigen. Okay clear eh? Kalau kita nak compare between amines dengan um, other compounds, difference? Clear miss. Okay. Next one, we'll look at the solubility. Okay for solubility, again nak tengok the ability to dissolve in such solvent. Okay, kita usually deal with water. So dalam case ni pun kita nak tengok dengan water molecule. Okay, primary amine and secondary amine, you already know that the they can form hydrogen bond, both of them. But now the solubility will depends on the molecules yang kita ada dalam solvent iaitu air. So kalau tadi kita cakap primary and secondary can form hydrogen bond, what about tertiary? If tertiary amine is about to pair up with water molecule, can they form hydrogen bond between uh, them? Okay. Can. Okay, boleh. Sebab apa? Sebab tadi kita tengok um, intermolecular forces between the same molecules. But now bila solubility, dia punya definition berubah, kena tengok antara solvent. Kalau dekat sini, uh, untuk tertiary amine, dia boleh buat sebab kat sini dia ada lone pair. Means, on your water solvent, your solvent to water, dia lah akan ambil hydrogen dari sini. So, OH yang ni yang akan buat hydrogen bond. Tapi banyak ke dia boleh buat hydrogen bond as compared to primary and secondary? Tak. No. Okay, tak banyak. Okay, so kita tahulah kalau dalam solubility, maksudnya semua boleh dissolve in water. Okay. And then um, as for as for general solubility, okay, instead of having primary, secondary and tertiary, ni kalau kita nak tengok dari segi hydrophobic area because this is the R ni adalah carbon. They mix up from carbon and hydrogen jadi dia adalah hydrophobic area. So the num as the number of carbon atoms increases for your alkyl group, dia punya trend akan sama macam alcohol. Where uh, carbon with uh, five, akhirnya compound with more than five carbon, dia akan jadi insoluble lah, susah sikit dia nak uh, dissolve in the water. So lebih kurang dia sama, ini macam yang alkohol kita tengok sebelum ni pun. Okay, another solvent that you need to know whether they can dissolve or not is organic solvent. Okay, organic solvent usually comprises of uh, carbon and hydrogen lah, usually benzene ke, apa ke kan. So alcohol pun sama juga sebab dia ada carbon and hydrogen. So amine ni sebab dia boleh buat hydrogen bond, so by right dia boleh je dissolve in um, all this organic solvent. Okay, sebab apa dia boleh buat? Sebab dia boleh form van der Waal forces dengan orang ni. Walaupun tengok eh, kita dia tak ada the, the criteria. Mungkin amin boleh provide NH tapi ether tak ada OH. Uh, tapi somehow dia boleh lah, dia take turn lah siapa yang nak, siapa yang nak provide the hydrogen, siapa nak provide the uh, long pair kalau nak buat hydrogen bond. Tapi uh, at the very least dia boleh buat van der Waal forces between them. Okay so uh, in terms of water and organic solvent solubility, amin memang boleh dissolve. Tapi berbeza dia punya explanations. Okay, last one is basicity. Do you still remember what is meant by acidity? Yes. Okay, so basicity is the opposite to bas uh, acidity. Kalau dalam acid, we say that the substance is capable to donate hydrogen, to donate proton. Okay, kalau base pula, instead of donate, dia akan accept. Okay, bila dia akan accept, maksudnya dia, dia banyak electrons. Okay, uh, in... In last semester, we learned about the Arrhenius. Ingat lagi tak? Yang conjugate-conjugate tu. Tak ingat. Okay, Arrhenius tu one of the uh, one of the scientists yang propose the definitions. The definitions for for acid and base. Okay, sama saja kalau tengok daripada segi Lewis couple. Okay, kiranya sama tau. Acid hari tu saya ada cakap, it's either you, right? 
working. It's either you look at the loan tie to be donated ataupun stability of the conjugate. Ah, daripada conjugate inilah yang kita tengok definitions of um, Arrhenius tu. So, um, kalau kita nak define this base, okay, define this base whether uh, the basicity is increasing or decreasing, we're going to look at each of these um, apa ni factors, sama je tapi dua definition sebelainan. Kalau awak nak cakap in terms of electron to be donated ataupun to be accepted, kita akan cakap dari segi Lewis. Okay, Lewis sebab dia propose dia banyak elektron kan. Kita belajar Lewis structure. So, elektron kita tengah bercakap tentang elektron. Kalau awak nak cakap tentang the stability, tak kisahlah positive charge or negative charge, kita akan cakap uh, tentang Arrhenius, the conjugate, the conjugate, SCM conjugate base. Okay, so sekarang saya nak fokuskan pada this lone pair. Okay, we know amin dia ada lone pair. Sebab ada lone pair ni lah dia jadi base kan? Betul Miss. Okay, sebab dia jadi base, dia ada banyak elektron. Jadi dia jadi macam generous untuk bagi dekat orang. Sebab dia ada banyak, dia nak bagi dekat orang. Sebab tu dia boleh bagi dekat hydrogen. In other words, kita nak accept lah proton. Sebab dia kaya, dia boleh bagi. Bila dia bagi, dia akan bagi dekat hydrogen sahaja. Hydrogen yang kita try to dissolve kiranya this amine kalau ikut definition base kita belajar substance dissociates in water sama ada partially or completely to form OH- minus. So aim kita nak dapatkan OH- minus. how are we going to get this OH- minus by uh, by donating the hydrogen maksudnya bagi uh, nitrogen ni ambil the hydrogen Nanti dapatlah NH4 plus dengan OH minus. Once dia dah ambil, dia dapatlah the conjugate acid ni. Sebab tu kalau kita nak cakap tentang elektron, kita cakap pasal um, Lewis. Kalau cakap pasal conjugate ni, cakap pasal yang Arrhenius. Okay, faham kan yang ni? Sama saja, dia cuma terbalik daripada acidity. So nanti bila kita dah accept the lone pair ni, ambil hydrogen, dia akan dapat positive charge. So bila dia positive charge, dia akan uh, ikut the same trend as carbocation. So you dekat dekat nitrogen tu dah jadi positif. Kalau nak cakap tentang stability, kita patut tambah elektron dekat dia sebab dia sekarang kurang. Kalau yang sebelum ni kita cakap acidity, kita tak nak dia dah banyak elektron kan, O minus kan. Kalau kita keep on bagi dia jadi tak stabil. So dia, dia simply the opposite je lah daripada acidity. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Now, kita recall balik apa group yang kita pernah belajar dalam acidity last time. But this time around, we're dealing with this nitrogen instead of oxygen minus. Okay, nitrogen jadi kita tahu uh, kalau basicity, kalau dah, uh, kalau, sorry, kalau acidity, kita nak accept, eh, kita nak remove, nak donate H+. Okay, kalau sekarang ni, dia ni nak ambil. So, untuk dia ambil hydrogen daripada water, dia kena banyak elektron dekat nitrogen. Okay, got it eh? What will happen if electron donating group directly attached to the nitrogen with this lone pair? What will happen to the electron density on this nitrogen? Will they increase or decrease? Increase. Apa? Increase. Increase. Okay, so by having electron donating group dekat sebelah nitrogen ni, dia akan try to increase the density of the electrons on nitrogen. So bila dia try to increase the um, density of electrons, what will happen to the nitrogen? The nitrogen ni akan jadi makin basic tu tak? Makin kaya dengan elektron, right? Betul. Okay, bila dia makin banyak elektron dekat dia, senang tak dia nak pergi ambil hydrogen dekat water? Senang. So kalau dia eager untuk pergi ambil hydrogen, dia kuat lah. Jadi dia boleh pergi uh, ambil hydrogen tu. So itulah maksudnya basicity dia makin bertambah bila dia ni banyak elektron. Kita terbalik sahaja dengan acidity. If we have electron withdrawing group that usually favour um, oxygen minus. So sekarang ni nitrogen, you initially got electrons but then you have group that withdraw the electrons from the nitrogen. What will to the density on nitrogen, will they decrease or increase? 
decrease. Decrease. So bila dia decrease, the basicity decreases or increases? Increase. De eh, decrease. Decrease lah, dia makin kurang. Yes, dia bila makin kurang base dia, makin kurang elektron, susah tak untuk dia pergi ambil hidrogen tu? Yes. Ya, yeah. so basicity pun akan berkurang juga. So, yang kali ni, dia tak banyak macam uh, acidity last time. Banyak banyak case kan, positions lah and what not. Uh, dia very simple, this one. Okay, so um, since we have these three classes of amine, okay, kita ada primary, secondary and tertiary. And we know that these are should be alkyl group, uh, sorry, EDG or EWG. The alkyl group. You're only EDG ke EWG? Dia bagi EDG. elektron or dia e tarik elektron? EDG. Donating. The donating. So suppose from primary to tertiary, the basicity increases or decreases? Increase. Apa? Increase. Increase. Increase eh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, sepatutnya primary, secondary and tertiary makin bertambah lah. Okay tapi awak tak boleh terus um, buat conclusion macam tu. We know the primary and secondary, yes, the basicity will increase sebab increasing of alkyl group. Okay kat sini tolong uh, take note. Sebab basicity ni kita akan ada dua cases. One in gaseous state another one in aqueous state. For both state gases and aqueous, okay, secondary always higher than primary, tu betul. Okay, eh, makin tinggi sebab alkyl group makin banyak. But this is not always the case for tertiary. Okay, kenapa pula bukan ke lagi banyak electron ring group, lagi tinggi dia punya basicity. Okay, sebab kita ada gaseous state and aqueous state and we know kalau gaseous state maksudnya dia gas, aqueous dalam air, right? Betul tak? Yes. Yes. Jadi dalam air, you are going to deal with the water molecule. Water molecule akan buat apa kalau dia berjumpa dengan uh, amin? Hydrogen bond. Yes, dia akan buat hydrogen bond. Dalam basicity, kita nak tengok dia buat hydrogen bond ke? No. Uh, kalau dalam basicity, kita tak fokus pada hydrogen bond. Dia nak pergi bagi uh, long pairing. So maksudnya, untuk tertiary ni akan ada sedikit Um, uh, perbezaan antara primary secondary kita tak boleh terus fokus pada all three ni akan uh, give higher basicity since we have aqueous state ni we got water this lone pair dia akan um, berebut juga nak buat water uh, nak buat hydrogen bond dengan water molecule instead of ambil hydrogen sahaja daripada water so basicity untuk tertiary amine untuk gaseous state and aqueous state a bit difference Okay, tapi untuk secondary dengan primary, secondary always higher than primary for both state. Hanya tengok dekat number of alkyl group. Tapi kalau dekat tertiary, sebab dia akan uh, berebut untuk guna dan awak tengok eh, bila dia makin banyak, kan kita cakap um, elektron, uh, sorry, the water molecule dia boleh datang daripada atas, daripada belakang, daripada tepi sini juga kan. So dia pun ada gangguan dari segi steric hindrance kalau terlalu banyak. So dia akan mengurangkan basicity tertiary amine because of this uh, com compressed um, environment. Maksudnya dia uh, ni compressed pula dah apa? Crowded. Okay. Boleh? Untuk tertiary je lain sikit. Faham ke? Alright. Okay. So now kita tengok, kalau gas phase, a gas phase, dia tak ada water molecule. Jadi, just depend on number of electron donating group. So we could simply say the tertiary with the most number of um, electron donating group will have the highest basicity as compared to secondary, primary and also ammonia. Okay, yang ni clear eh? Dalam gas phase, sama sahaja. Lagi banyak EDG, lagi tinggi basicity. Okay? Okay, miss. Tapi kalau dalam aqueous phase sebab kita ada juga water molecule yang nak pergi buat hydrogen bond dengan um, our amine. So the basicity will depends on the number of electron group, dotting group as well as the steric effect. If you have so much steric hindrance, they will somehow decreases the basicity of the um, molecule. So the highest basicity goes to secondary followed by primary 
dan due to the uh, crowded space in tertiary I mean jadi dia punya basicity lagi rendah daripada primary but higher than ammonia. Okay eh yang ni so dia terbalik dekat sini je lah untuk tertiary dekat aqueous state. So bila baca soalan tu hati-hati bila dia sebut kalau dia tak sebut uh, phase apa kita ni kita cakap dia dalam gas phase lah. Kalau dia dah mention in aqueous phase awak kena ambil kira benda ni. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. Okay. So um, then kita dah tahu um, the arrangement. So now kita nak check sikit lah antara aliphatic and aromatic amine. Okay. So before this we learn in aromatic amine, uh, in aromatic compound we're going to have these delocalizations of electron. Okay. Uh, in aliphatic we got no localization. Maksud localizations of electron ni keberadaan elektron ni adakah dia boleh bergerak mas dia bergerak merata ataupun hanya di sini sahaja kalau dia boleh gerak kita panggil delocalize kalau dia hanya kat sini sahaja tak bergerak mana dia kita panggil dia localize so in terms of localizations of electron in aniline okay this is what we call aniline dan ini adalah cyclo cyclohexyl amine can i know whether the electrons in aniline is localized or delocalized Delocalize. Delocalize. Well for um, cyclohexyl amine? Localize. Localize. So bila electrons uh, on the nitrogen in aniline will delocalize into the benzene ring, what will happen to the electron density on the nitrogen? Will they increase or increase? Uh, will they increase or decrease? Decrease. Decrease. So, decrease. Eh, decrease. Ah, saya silap. <laughs> Kejap. <laughs> Kejap awak nak cik baik cik present. Haa ah, cik tu balik. Okay betul lah decrease lah. Cik baik awak. Okay. So dia akan Uh, dia akan decrease dan decrease juga basicity Kalau increase uh, in nitrogen uh, density dekat sini Basicity pun akan increase Okay so dan tu dari segi resonance effect Sebab sometimes um, the compound given okay, The compound given will gives you um, other than amine Okay lepas tu dah lah other than amine Lepas tu nak kena tengok lagi dia aliphatic or aromatic So fokus dia kalau basicity baca elok tengok kita nak kuatkan dekat lone pair ni bagi banyak elektron dekat dia. Kalau acidity kita nak kurang ke elektron dekat uh, ion tu. Okay so now uh, nak tunjuk sikit macam mana dia punya resonance effect. Okay before this you deal with resonance effect but it comes from negative charge. Negative charge tu dia bawa masuk ke dalam dia akan dapat positif. Okay, tetapi kalau untuk this nitrogen, dia tak akan dapat positive charge. Sebab dalam ni elektron dah banyak. Dalam ni elektron dah banyak. Ni pula ada extra. Okay, bila dia ada extra, kalau dia bawa masuk ke dalam sekalipun, dalam tu pun ada extra. So, lain sikit. When you uh, delocalize the electrons on the nitrogen into the aniline, okay, dia somehow akan stabilize. So, bila dia masuk sini, kita akan form double bond dekat sini. So bila dah dapat double bond, dia akan dapat positive charge on this nitrogen. Okay, what will happen here, the bond here, the double bond here akan pecah. Usually dalam uh, resonance effect before this, kita just bagi dekat carbon sebelah, right? Betul tak? Bagi carbon sebelah, dia dapat double bond balik, betul tak? Betul. Okay, tapi kali ni awak tengok dia punya arrow. Arrow dia pergi ke edge of the carbon bukannya pada bond baru. Jadi kenapa? Sebab kita cakap dia bawa extra electron. So that's why lah dia kena bagi dekat H. So bila dia bagi ni, this H ni carbon instead of having four uh, bond, satu, dua, tiga, empat, kita tambah lagi elektron dekat dia. So dah ada lima elektron kan? Betul tak? Kan tadi sini ada satu, dua, tiga kan? Lepas tu memang ada satu hydrogen, right? Yes. 
Okay. Yes, so yes. bear in mind kita ada satu hydrogen. So satu hydrogen kat sini. Bila kita pecahkan bond ni, kan satu bond ni dua elektron. So dapat dua kat sini. So tiga tambah dua tinggal dapat lima kan? Yes, yes. Ha, sebab tu dia negative charge, negative one sebab dia ada extra satu elektron. Okay miss. Okay miss. Lepas tu yang ni, this extra elektron here kita masuk balik buat bond baru buat double bond sini tetapi yang bond yang ni pula kita pecahkan bagi dekat H ni pula. Nanti dapat dekat sini. Lepas tu yang ni buat bond baru bagi dekat H ni pula. Dapat extra elektron kat sini and lastly masuk balik dapat bond dekat sini pula. Okay. Nanti dia akan kembali ke nitrogen atas ni. So basically lain-lain lah kan sebab ni tadi kat sini ni sekarang dekat sini. Yang tadi ni dekat sini dia dah bertukar ke sini. Yes, yes. So by uh, decreasing the electron density on nitrogen jadi lagi less basic lah uh, this aniline daripada alkyl amine. Okay. When comparing these three compound, okay first sekali bagi saya nama compound ni dulu. What is the name of this compound? You have this uh, apa ni benzene lepas tu siapa nak jadi nombor satu? Kalau ada NH tu kita ambil Aniline kan? Yes. Okay, so what is the name of this compound? The NO2 is nitro. So the name should be? Nitroaniline. Nitroaniline but what about for the name? Yes, for nitroaniline, if we use prefix that we have learned in chapter 6, automata para, what should this be? For, one and four. Para. Para. So para nitro aniline. Can I know what uh, factors affecting the basicity of this para nitro aniline? Dia ada apa dalam ni? Do they have resonance effect? Yes. Okay, dia ada resonance effect. Lagi this NO2 ni, kita tahu NO2 dia akan ada lone pair on it. Bila dia ada lone pair on it, maksudnya dia electron withdrawing or electron donating. Untuk withdraw dia kena kuat. Dia ada electron banyak dekat dia. Banyak tak electron dekat NO2? Banyak. Banyak. So the presence of EDG or EWG when you have NO2? EWG. EWG. Okay. So kalau kita ada EWG, will they increase or decrease the basicity? Decrease. Decrease when when we have resonance effect on top of that, dia akan decrease or increase? Kalau resonance, kita tarik elektron pergi ke dalam. Basicity increase or decrease? Kalau kurang elektron dekat sini? Decrease. Decrease. Good. So kita suppose dia ni sepatutnya rendah lah kan basicity dia. Betul. Okay. So this one pula nama dia aniline. Dalam aniline kita ada Ada tak resonance effect? Ada. Ada. EWG ada tak presence? Tak ada. Tak ada. Okay so dia hanya ada resonance effect. So somehow they will decrease the basicity as well. What about this one? In NH2 uh, and this cycloalkene of hexane. So cyclohexanamine right the name? Yes yes. Okay. Uh, cyclohexanamine got resonance effect or not? No. 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 Ada tak any group attached to this amine? What do no, we call no. this group? Bila dia alkyl group? Electron donating group. Yes, in cyclohexanamine, we have this uh, alkyl group of electron donating group. Electron donating group will give electrons to this nitrogen. So will they increase or decrease the basicity? Increase the basicity. Increase the basicity. So the basicity increases from para nitro aniline to aniline to cyclohexanamine due to the presence of this resonance effect as well as the group of withdrawing and donating. So in terms of explanations, I'll betting on nota lah untuk lagi uh, details. So now kita akan masuk 11.4. So under 11.4, we want to form amines. Okay, before this, from previous chapters, um, have you come across any reactions that finally form amine? The carbon bearing the nitrogen, ada tak? Reactions yang involve the preparations of amine? Okay. Dekat chapter berapa tu? Kalau kita tengok. 
chat ke? Chat dia berapa? Chapter 7 ada tak? Chapter 5 saya tahu tak ada. Tak ada kan? Chapter 5 ada tak? Tak ada. Chapter 6 ada. Recall, recall. Chapter 6 ada tak? Tak ada. Chapter 7? Tak ada. Ada. Chapter 7 in nucleophilic substitutions. Okay, where we react with excess ammonia. Can I know the ammonia is strong or weak nucleophile? Weak. Weak. Sebab dia ada lomba sahaja. Okay, so chapter 7 ada. Chapter 8 ada tak? Tak. Okay, tak ada. Chapter 9 pun saya rasa macam tak ada. Maksudnya yang admin tu lah. Chapter 10 ialah jadi MI. Okay. So adalah juga kan kita pernah jumpa sebelum ni. Dia sebenarnya ada cuma dia tak direct dapat amine. Okay. So the first reactions involved in preparations of amine we have four all together. The first one is reductions. Okay before this we learned reductions only happened to carboxylic acid and aldehyde is it? And ketone. Yes. Okay, involving carbon and uh, carbon double bond O. Okay, sekarang ni awak boleh juga buat reductions. Okay, reductions dari mana? Reductions of nitro compound. Okay, this nitro compound comes from chapter 6 yang kita buat last time. Okay, sebab apa? Sebab dia cakap dekat sini, reductions of nitro compound, the compound that got NO2 on them to form aromatic amines. So in which chapter do you think that we have this nitro compound to be formed when you are going to form the aromatic amine? Chapter berapa yang kita ada buat reactions yang kita dapatkan nitro compound? Kim dekat sini aromatic amine kita nak buat. Kalau dapat aromatic amine, maksudnya nitro compound awak kena aromatic or aliphatic? Aromatic. 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 Dalam chapter 6 kita belajar benzene ring which is the aromatic compound. Do we have any reactions that form nitro compound? Ada. Ada. Okay, kita ada nitrations, right? Yes. yes, miss. Okay, so if let's say you come across reactions starting from benzene and then somehow akan dapat um, aniline. So awak sepatutnya ada dalam fikiran awak kena buat nitro compound sebab lastly kita nak form aromatic amine kan? Yes. Okay so the nitro compound here, the nitro benzene, okay kita akan undergo reactions with zinc hydrogen plus okay the catalyst lah or you can also use SNCl2 and hydrogen plus or Fe and H plus okay so ini adalah dia punya conditions either or isah antara salah satu. Jangan tulis tiga-tiga. Okay, bila ada these conditions, this NO2 will immediately be reduced to become NH2. Okay, directly attached to it. Reactions ni bukan substitution, dia adalah reduction. From double bond O, dia akan jadi H. Sama macam awak buat C double bond O, tukar jadi COH, right? Yes, yes. Okay, good. So this is the first reactions involved to prepare amine. So ni dari chapter 6 lah. And then the second one, reductions of nitrile to form primary aliphatic amine. Only primary aliphatic, bukan aromatic. Okay, bukan secondary but aliphatic and they are primary only. Okay, can I know how does this nitrile compounds looks like? Kalau nitro kita ada NO2. Kalau nitrile sepatutnya kena ada NH2. NH2 kita panggil amine. Nitrile bukan amine. Somehow dia ada nitrogen tapi dia bukan NH2, dia bukan NO2. Dia apa? Kita pernah jumpa sebelum ni. CN. CN. Okay. Nitrile means you got cyanogroup on your compound. Okay. Kita pernah tak jumpa cyanogroup? Macam mana nak form cyanogroup before? 
Benar. Okay, in chapter 7. Apa-apa pun dia akan melalui chapter 7. So somehow, kalau dia bagi awak alkin ke, awak boleh buat halo alkin, awak boleh dapatkan uh, nitrate compound dan oli baru dapat amin. Okay, so here I have this aliphatic amin. Eh, aliphatic amin pula, sorry. Aliphatic nitrate compound sebab this is on the cycloalkene. Okay, and then we have this CN. This CN lah nitrate, lah na cyano, sorry. The whole thing is nitra compound undergo uh, reductions reactions using the reducing agent that we used to uh, use in chapter 9 and also 10. Okay, kita sama ada guna H2NI ke PD or PT and then you can use uh, lithium aluminium hydride and acid catalyst or sodium boro tetrahydride and juga uh, in methanol. Okay. Sebab apa kita boleh guna sama? Sebab dia macam menyerupai uh, C double bond O. This one kita ada C triple bond N. So sebab dia ada C sebab tu kita boleh guna reducing agent yang sama. Yang tadi nitro tu dia tak ada C kan? So dia tak boleh guna reducing agent yang ni. So awak kena ingat lain sikit lah. Dia tak sama okay? Okay. Uh, ni boleh yes. ulang tak this part yang reduction tadi? Okay, so kalau reduction yang awal tadi, kita nak guna zinc H plus or SNCl2H plus ataupun FEH plus. Walaupun dia guna reduction, sepatutnya reducing agent kita yang sama lah kan macam kita guna sebelum ni, right? Ah uh, Betul. Okay, sebelum ni, kita deal with C double bond O. But this time you have N double bond O. So dia tak, dia punya reactivity tak sama sebab tu tak boleh guna um, sama ada sodium borohydride uh, bor sodium borohydride ataupun lithium aluminium hydride ataupun uh, hydrogen gas tu dia kena guna reducing agent yang ni yang lain. Okay miss. Alright. So yang saya cakap tadi ni kenapa yang ni kita boleh guna sama sebab dia ada C juga. The um, reactivity of carbon tak kisahlah dengan O ke dengan C dia somehow ada persamaan. So dia bolehlah compatible dengan reducing agent yang kita guna before this. Okay miss. Faham miss. Yes. So daripada uh, cyano group here, kita akan tukar jadi CH2 and H2. Okay, bear in mind, um, the number of carbon is still the same. In here we have one carbon, in here pun one carbon. What matters here, dekat sini instead of ada tiga bond, kita akan jadikan dia single bond. Dan the nitrogen akan take up the hydrogen sebab tu dapat primary aliphatic amine only. Kalau dia dapat secondary, um, dia tak boleh dapat secondary sebab dia memang akan terus uh, nitrogen ambil hydrogen. Dia tak akan ambil, um, dia tak akan ambil alkyl group. Sebab tu kena aliphatic primary. Yang mana OH ke benda-benda lain kan dia tak buat reaction sebab tak ada pun. Tak sesuai. Okay. Okay miss. Alright. So the third one. Reductions lagi, okay, sebab kita ada ni reductions of amide, okay. Amide, we know we have C double bond O directly attached to the carbon adalah nitrogen. Okay, so dia, dia sama lebih kurang macam carboxylic acid last time. Okay, but then reductions of amide, reductions of carboxylic acid only gives you primary alcohol. Tetapi reductions of amide, they can form either primary, secondary or tertiary aliphatic amide. Okay, dia boleh dapat sama ada satu, dua, tiga sebab apa? Sebab amide tu pun dia akan ada sama ada hydrogen or alkyl group attached to it. Jadi sebab tu dia boleh dapat primary, secondary or tertiary. Okay, so let's say we have this compound. Okay, this compound when you have C double bond O, the carbonyl group directly attached is the uh, amino group. So kita panggil dia carboxamide. So this is your amide compound. Keliling amide compound, kita ada berapa alkyl group attached to it? Keliling uh, amide group ni, ni Allah. Keliling amide ni, kita ada berapa group attached to it? One, one and two. Two, three kan? Betul tak? Ni satu. Dua, tiga. Keliling ni, keliling O, N ni. Kita ada ha, satu. Ya, satu, dua, tiga. So, bila undergo reductions, okay, reductions, kita akan buang double bond O ni. Keep the number of carbon the same. Okay, reductions of amide only remove this double bond O, yang lain semua sama.
Okay. Okay, Miss. Okay, and then please bear in mind when you are going to write the reducing agent for amide, you can only use lithium aluminium hydride, but then with some modifications. Before this, the second um the second step is H3O plus. Tapi sebab dekat nitrogen kita ada lone pair yang uh, kuat dia punya basicity, jadi kita tak akan guna H3O plus takut dia buat reaction lain. Dia akan guna H2O sahaja. Instead of H3O plus, tolong guna H2O sahaja untuk amide. Okay, amide dia lain sikit dia punya reactivity. Okay, Miss. Ya, yeah. sodium borohydride tak boleh guna, um, hydrogen gas tak boleh guna. Only lithium aluminium hydride but H2O. Bukan H3O plus. Bukan H plus. Only H2O. Okay, so the number of carbon still the same. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ni pun 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so up until now, tiga reactions yang dapatkan amine, number of carbon tetap sama. Okay, last one is Hoffman's degradations of amide. Bila sebut degradations, kita nak downgrade kan dia. Bila sebut downgrade, dekat sini kita ada satu hint yang dia akan kurangkan bilangan carbon. Okay, this is the one and only way to um, eliminate carbon number of carbon. Sebelum ni kita belajar cara nak tambah carbon either using uh, cyanide, cyanide group ataupun uh, green yard reagent. Kalau nak buang nak buang carbon hanya kena lalu Hoffman's degradations of amide. Make sure ada amide dulu baru boleh buat these reactions. Okay? Okay miss. Okay, so and the, these Hoffman's degradations can only form primary amine, tak kisahlah alkyl or aromatic. Okay, only primary amine, alkyl or aromatic pun will do. Okay, so you initially got this compound. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, kalau ikutkan, this is um, amide with six carbon. Okay, when we undergo reactions with Cl2, OH- and H2O, Basically halogen lah. X2 lah. Saya guna sini X2. Kita akan tinggal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So apa yang berlaku dekat antara dua compound ni? Apa perbezaan yang awak nampak? Apa yang tak ada dekat produk? C double bond O. Yes. The C double bond O now has been removed from the compound to only form amine with 5 carbons. Okay, nampak? Kita remove the whole thing, C double bond O. Kalau macam reduction tadi, kita buang double bond O sahaja, carbon remain. Tapi sekarang kita akan remove the whole thing, carbon together with the O. So, towards the end kita hanya akan keep the one in blue box. So, kalau saya bagi contoh aromatic amine pula. Okay, this aromatic amine, you want to um, remove only the C double bond O parts. Okay, and this time kita guna Br2 plus. So basically, usually lah, usually kita akan guna Br2. Tapi sometimes soalan pun ada bagi Cl2. Jadi tak salah pun sebab dua-dua ni pun adalah uh, halogen yang boleh um, support this Hoffman's degradations. Dia asalkan ada this um, inert gas together with alkaline solutions followed by water. Okay, dari sini kita akan remove this C double one O we keep only this chain attached to the nitrogen. Sebab itulah kalau tengok, this nitrogen, kalau kita ada dua, maksudnya satu lagi belongs to alkyl group. That's why we form on the primary amine. Yang ni pun sama, primary juga. Sebab ada satu group besar dekat sini. Tapi dia aromatic. Okay? Okay, Miss. Okay. Dah habis untuk preparations of amine. Ada berapa reactions tadi saya tunjuk? Four. Ada four and all of them is reductions. Reductions yang melibatkan somehow different um, reducing agent from the last one yang kita belajar in carboxylic acid. Okay. Hanya satu sahaja yang boleh sama which is the C triple bond N. Okay as for chemical properties, the reactions. Okay kita akan guna Hinsberg test. Kita ada nitrous acid test dan juga kita panggil satu tu, bromine water. Okay. Semua ni, dia sebenarnya kalau dia nama test ni, dia pun boleh guna untuk reactions lah. Okay. Tapi dalam yang, uh, dalam amine ni memang dia semua boleh ada test juga. 
So sebelum ni kita just ada kalau um, aldehyde from ketone, okay, yang tu sahaja. Tapi untuk Hinsberg test, nitrous acid test and what not ni, setiap classes of amine berlainan dia punya produk. Jadi awak kena put effort sikit untuk hafal dia punya compound. Kena tahu apa benda yang buat dulu nak. Baru boleh hafal nak dapat compound apa. So the function of test, obviously kita nak distinguish the classes of amines. Either primary, secondary and tertiary. Okay, apa yang kita akan buat dalam Hinsberg test? In Hinsberg test, they will involve two steps. Okay, two steps. The first step you are going to make sure the, con uh, the small amount of amine tak kisahlah primary, secondary or tertiary with the benzene sulfonyl chloride. Sulfonyl chloride ni dia sama macam carboxylic acid but instead of having S double bond O, kita akan ada sulfur double bond O. Ada dua O attached to the sulfur sebab dia expanded octet in period 3. So kita akan the benzene directly attached to it is the SO2Cl. Okay, kita campurkan dia with excess KOH. So how do you write this? So this is our amine. Can I know the class of amine uh, given here? Primary. Okay, this is a primary amine. Can I know the name of this amine according to IUPAC? Methylamine. Methanamine. Okay, this primary amine to undergo reactions primary. with benzene. Okay, thank you. This primary amine, methanamine, undergo reactions with benzene sulfonyl chloride. Okay, benzene sulfonyl chloride with excess KOH. Okay, note here, our aim when these two form reactions, dia akan bersambung. Means this nitrogen akan buat bond dengan s one o 2 Okay, sekarang kita nampak from this amine, we have two available hydrogens, right? Yes, miss. Okay, it is much easier for you to remove hydrogen than the alkyl group. So, the first hydrogen here will pair up with this Cl. So, nanti kita akan remove. Kalau dia orang pair up, kita remove siapa? Cl. HCl. So, bila kita remove HCl, means this bond akan jadi lompat or positive charge. Nitrogen ni akan ada dapat elektron ke positive charge? Positive charge. Dia dapat lompat lah. Sebab HCl ni keluar, elektron bagi dekat nitrogen kan dia lebih negatif. Okay, miss. Okay, so nanti awak akan ada extra elektron sini kan? Betul. Okay, kalau ikutkan lah. So nanti awak ada lagi satu hydrogen. Okay, since kita akan react dengan base of KOH. Dari KOH, the K is on this spectator ion. The OH yang akan buat reaction. Ada tak any available hydrogen from your primary amine left untuk buat reactions dengan this OH minus? Bila kita Ada. dah remove hydrogen, tinggal satu lagi hydrogen kan? Yes. Hydrogen ni, dia capable tak untuk pergi react dengan OH dari KOH ni? Boleh. Boleh. Jadi, selain HCl, kita akan remove apa dekat sini? H2O. H2O. Okay. So, kalau dia pecah bond dekat sini, maksudnya nitrogen akan dapat extra elektron lagi kan? Betul. Okay, bila dia ada banyak elektron, boleh tak dia pergi bagi sikit dekat SO2? Boleh. Boleh. So, bolehlah dia buat bond. So, during the first step, dia akan dapat this uh, complex ion. Okay, this complex ion where we have two lone pair, tinggal dua lone pair. Kalau ikutkan tadi, pecah yang ni, pecah yang ni, awak dapat tiga lone pair kan? Yes, miss. Tapi sebab dia dah buat bond dengan SO2, that's why satu daripada lompat dah hilang, dah jadi bond. So tinggallah dua. Bila dia tinggal dua, this nitrogen got more electrons on them or less electron? More electron. Bila more, that's why this nitrogen got negative charge. Okay? Okay, miss. Okay, and then the spectator ion that brings the OH just now, kita akan pair up dengan NA. So dia akan jadi K+. 
Yang ni N minus sebab sepatutnya keliling N kita ada berapa? Ada lima je kan? But now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Sebab tu dia negatif satu saja. So dia akan dapat sort lah kat sini. Okay Miss. Okay. So asalnya dua-dua ni adalah sol, uh, solvent, bukan solvent. Apa ni? Kiranya uh, liquid lah kan? So kalau liquid kita patutnya tak nampak apa-apa lagi. Tapi once dia buat sort, kita akan dapat sebab ni test Uh, what kind of observations yang kita akan dapat bila dia dapat salt? Do you think the solutions will still be clear as it is or they will somehow form precipitate? Precipitate? Yes. Precipitate. During this step, we are going to form, eh sorry, betul tak clear solution? Uh, betul, ah, betul, betul. Betul, betul. Sorry, sorry. Sebab water, betul, betul. Sebab kita dah remove ni tapi sebab kita form water juga so kita akan form clear solution dekat sini. Betul, betul. A clear solution. The first step in primary amine undergo reactions with benzene sulfonic chloride, kita akan dapat clear solution sebab dia dah keluar kau air juga. Okay, boleh eh the first step ni? Boleh. Okay, uh, yes. Uh, yang negative sign tu memang dekat atas lone pair tu eh. Dekat not, dia asalkan dekat nitrogen. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, the second one, the second step, kita akan sambung. Basically, awak tak payah buat asing-asing, terus dia sambung dari yang tadi. Okay, the second step, yang asalnya kita ada clear solution, we are going to, um, apa ni, bagi, masukkan acid dekat dalam this compound. Okay, we have this compound and then undergo reactions with acid pula. Okay, dari sini, kita ada dua lompat kan? Yes, miss. Boleh tak one of the lompat kita donate bagi dekat H? Boleh. Boleh. Sebab dia ada extra electron kan? So bila dia donate dekat H, kita akan form NH. So dah tak ada lagi negative charge kan? Yes. Okay. Bila kita dah masukkan, kalau awak react lah apa sekalipun, macam tu nak masuk garamkan lagi, daripada clear, kalau dia banyak ada benda lain masuk dalam ni, mestilah dia akan form somehow macam produk kan? Produk yang kita nampak. Betul. Okay, so observations dekat second step akan berubah jadi precipitate formed. Boleh. Okay, this is only for primary. Since kita kata secondary pun boleh, tertiary pun boleh, kita kena tengok one by one. So primary settle lah. Eh. Primary first clear solution and then um, the second observations is precipitate formed. Siapa angkat tangan tadi? Tak perasan? Tak tekan eh? Okay, so tu untuk primary eh. Boleh saya proceed to secondary? Sorry, saya you tertekan. Okay. Um, untuk secondary boleh saya proceed? Boleh. Okay. So for secondary pula, can I know what is the name of this compound according to IUPAC? Dimethyl amine. Okay, itu common name. Kalau uh, IUPAC still kena ada longest parent chain that hold the nitrogen. Sekarang ada berapa longest parent chain kita? One. One. So one. kalau one nama dia metanamin kan? Yes. yes Now we have substituent on nitrogen. When do we have substituents on nitrogen, how are we going to uh, indicate the locations of these um, substituents kalau atas nitrogen? N time. Okay. So nama dia? N metanamin. Yes. N metal metanamin. Kalau ikut common name dimethyl amine. Kalau ayupak N metal metanamin. Okay, undergo reactions with benzene sulfonic chloride lagi sekali with the presence of excess KOH. Okay now, kita nampak on this secondary amine, you only have one available hydrogen. Okay, this one available hydrogen will first react with Cl. Okay, so dia akan removekan his Cl, right? Yes. Okay, kalau primary, kita akan ada lagi satu hydrogen pair up dengan OH. Dapat water, is it? Yes. But this time, yes. since we got only one hydrogen available, can they form, can we remove water as well? No. 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 Okay, jadi kat sini kita expect dia dapat clear solution ke? Tak. No. Uh, so kat sini observations kita akan dapat precipitate. So, uh, you remove H, okay betul kita ada long pass, sepatutnya ada elektron. Tapi kan dia dah buat bond dengan SO2 sebab tu dah tak ada elektron kat sini. Okay. 
Okay, Miss. Okay, so compound ni pun lain eh. Tolong take note. Dia lain sebab availability of the H2 berlainan juga kalau primary and secondary. Okay, and then kita akan further react dengan siapa second step? HCL. Okay, kita akan further react dengan HCL. Bila kita further react dengan HCL, memang dia ada lone pair. Okay, memang dia ada lone pair. Tapi, dia tak akan ambil hidrogen tu. Okay, not worth it pun. Kalau dia ambil hidrogen nanti dia dapat plus charge tapi tak ada buat apa. So dia tak akan ambil hidrogen sebab keadaan dia pun dah tak dah tak stabil macam tu. So kita akan just cakap uh, once they react with HCl, no reactions will happen. Kalau no reactions happen, what will happen to the observations at these steps? Kalau tadi kita ada precipitate, bila tak ada reactions berlaku, ada lagi tak precipitate dekat sini? So the precipitate will remain. Boleh eh? So lain eh? Secondary lain, primary lain. Alright. Alright. So the last one is tertiary. What is the name of the tertiary amine according to IUPAC? Yes, NN dimethyl metanamin. Okay, so NN dimethyl metanamin ada tak available hydrogen dekat nitrogen kita? Tak ada. Tak ada. So bila tak ada, dia boleh buat reaction tak? Tak. Tak boleh tak. buat reaction lah. Okay, so bila no reaction, what kind of observations yang kita expect? Clear or precipitate form? Clear. Yeah. Clear solution. Okay. Uh, bila dia tak buat reactions, means walaupun dia no reactions, maksudnya ada lagi lah kan compound ni. Dia cuma tak pergi react dengan SOCl2 ni kan? Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, with this in mind, awak uh, masih ada ni dekat step ni. Bila kita undergo reactions with HCl, okay. Bila kita buat reactions dengan HCl, kita akan ambil the hydrogen. Okay, sebab apa dia orang ni dah stable enough untuk pergi ambil the hydrogen. Okay, dia ambil hydrogen, bila dia dapat positive negative charge, dia akan dapat observations of clear or precipitate. Clear. Clear solution. Okay lah macam tu. So lain, kalau primary tak kisahlah aromatic or aliphatic, First you form clear solution, then you form precipitate. Kalau yang secondary, first you form precipitate and the second one, you your precipitate remain. Kalau tertiary, uh, the first observation is clear solution but tak ada reactions berlaku but then the second step got reactions berlaku tetapi observation still clear. Right? Okay. okay. So that's for Hinsberg test. So you can use this as reactions and also uh, test untuk, uh, to, untuk distinguish between primary and secondary and tertiary. Tak kisah aliphatic or um, aromatic. Okay, next one. We have nitrous acid test. Okay, nitrous acid test basically HNO2. But please, Whenever you want to form these um, reactions involving nitrous acid test, you must always write the reagent like this sebab dia prepared in situ. Awak tak boleh terus tulis HNO2. Okay, memang kena tulis ni cara dia. NaNO2, HCl, 0 to 5 degrees C. Tak ada cara lain. Ini sahaja yang diterima sebab dia prepared in situ. Okay, so from this nitrous acid test, we want to um, add the hydrogen and also NO2 to this compound. Okay, tetapi macam biasalah primary, secondary, tertiary, even for aliphatic and aromatic pun akan ada perbezaan. Dia tak akan semua sama. Dia lebih difficult dari um, Hinsberg test. Okay, during the first uh, steps here, dia memang satu step je lah. Dekat sini, kita ada compound apa nama kita ni? This is primary because you got only one alkyl group attached to it kan? What is the name of this compound? 2 methyl propanamine. Propanamine. Can the propanamine we put number before it? 
Perlu ke tak perlu? Boleh tak dia duduk kat uh, carbon dekat nombor dua ni? NH2 ni boleh tak duduk kat carbon nombor dua? Boleh. Boleh. So nama sepatutnya tu metal. One, one propanamine. propanamine. Yes, one propanamine. Undergo nitrous acid test. Okay, undergo nitrous acid test. You will form this diazonium salt. Okay, so tengok. The carbon chain remain one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What happened here is you, initially you got NH2. Kita akan removekan H2 tu. Dan kita akan masukkan nitrogen. Nitrogen from this N. Okay. So bila kita masukkan nitrogen, kita akan dapat this N triple bond N. Boleh? Boleh. Okay. So N triple bond N ni kita tahu yang N sepatutnya keliling dia ada tiga sahaja kan? Tiga bond kan sepatutnya? So ada satu lompat. So lima right? Baru dia zero charge. Yes. Tapi bila dia buat triple bond dengan N dan single bond dengan C, maksudnya dia ada hanya empat elektron keliling nitrogen. Suppose it to be, uh, suppose it to be five, tapi dia ada four. That's why on this nitrogen, you're going to have positive charge. Okay, Miss. Okay. And then for this nitrogen pula, kita memang ada tiga bond. Don't forget to put this uh, lone pair sebab dengan ada lima elektron barulah dia jadi kosong dekat sini. So and then since kita nak ambil Cl juga daripada these reactions, Cl ni akan pair up dengan N plus charge. So boleh je nak letak dekat atas ni atau letak sebelah ni. So this is our diazonium salt. Diazonium salt is when you have N triple bond N positive together with Cl minus. This is your diazonium salt. Okay, miss. Okay, and look here. We have this um, square bracket indicates that this diazonium salt in aliphatic amine is not yet stable. Dia tak stable. Bila dia tak stable, this is not our final product. Okay, so from this unstable diazonium salt, the alkyl diazonium salt, we are going to further cliff the bond. Okay, dekat sini kita akan, uh, once kita cliff the bond, okay, all the electrons akan pergi dekat N. So, dia akan jadi N2. Dia akan uh, be removed as N2 gas. Okay, Endo? Okay, Miss. Bila elektron semua pergi ke nitrogen, maksudnya your carbon will be positive or negative charge? Positive. Positif. Bila carbon ada positif charge, kita panggil dia? When carbon got positif charge on them, we call them as? Carbocation. Carbocation. And we learn that whenever we have carbocation, there, there is possibility for rearrangement, kan? If possible lah. Betul tak? Betul. Betul. Jadi dari sini, once kita remove N2 gas ni, kita akan dapat these three compounds. Okay. These three compounds, kita akan keep this carbon, four carbons. But then, since we are going to form a uh, positive charge on this carbon, kalau ada possibility untuk dapatkan uh, more stable carbon ion, awak kena buat rearrangement. Tapi kita tak perlu tunjuklah the, the mechanism. Only know that instead of having Uh, compound at this carbon kita better masukkan dekat sini sebab produk yang kita nak dapat kat sini lain-lain semuanya. Dia ada tiga benda yang dia akan jadi. Okay so from this um, step kita akan dapat alkene. Okay note here your alkene still got four carbon right? One, two, three, four. Okay and then kita tadi positive charge kat sini. Kalau kita tukar positive charge kat sini pun Awak masih akan dapat double bond dekat sini kan? Yes, miss. Awak buat kat sini pun sama, awak buat kat sini pun sama. So, dia tak adalah major product ke minor product. So, memang ini je lah only product kita. So, the first compound to be formed from this um, primary aliphatic amine of nitrous acid test akan dapat alkene. Next one, kita akan dapat halo alkene. You initially got positive charge on carbon one here. But then, once they undergo rearrangement, okay, the haloalkene to be formed is the major product at most stable carbocation. Sebab tu dia masuk dekat sini. Boleh? Boleh, Miss. Okay. 
And lastly is alcohol. Alcohol pun kita akan dapat the most stable alcohol. Sebab ada berlaku uh, rearrangement of carbocation dekat step ni. So ini adalah untuk primary aliphatic amine. From primary aliphatic amine, undergo nitrous acid test, you first form the unstable diazonium salt and then the diazonium salt further be broken into alkene, haloalkene and alcohol by removing this nitrogen gas. Okay, as for primary aromatic amine. Okay, primary aromatic amine. Kita akan dapat salt yang sama. Okay, tadi kita panggil apa salt ni? Diazonium salt. Yes, diazonium salt when you have this N triple bond N. Okay, note that uh, the group directly attached to this diazonium salt is uh, benzene ring. Benzene ring kita consider dia sebagai stable kan? Yes, Miss. Okay, bila dia stable, okay, bila dia stable, kita tak akan undergo the same uh, step as in primary aliphatic amine. Okay, so untuk primary aromatic amine, dia akan stop until this diazonium salt sahaja sebab dia dah stable, sebab kita ada benzene ring kat sini. Jadi, kita akan stop until here but then, this diazonium salt since they are stable, they are very, um, apa ni kita panggil, useful to form other compound. Okay, nanti kita akan guna balik this diazonium salt towards the end of this chapter. So dia cakap sebab dia stable, useful intermediates in various synthesis. Okay, tapi untuk uh, nitrous acid test, kalau primary aromatic, tunjuk sampai ni sahaja. Dia takkan dapat haloalkin, dia takkan dapat um, alkohol, dia takkan dapat alkin. Kalau aromatic, primary. Okay. Alright. Next one, we have for secondary compound, secondary aliphatic amine. How do we know they are secondary? Because on this nitrogen, we have methyl and ethyl. Dan hanya ada satu je hydrogen. Can I know the name of this compound? One, two. Longest carbon chain of two, nama dia apa? Itanamin. Itanamin. On nitrogen kita ada? Ethyl. And methylamine. Okay, good. So undergo this nitrous acid test. Apa yang kita akan form? We are going to form this group of N double bond O, single bond N. This is what we call nitroso. Okay, this is nitroso when you have NO. Yeah, apa yang kita buat dekat sini? Kita better awak susun dia bagi nampak ke arah kanan lah bagi kita nampak buat apa. So this hydrogen akan undergo reactions with this nitrous um, acid then you akan replace with the NO. NO akan masuk dekat nitrogen ni. Okay, instead of having N triple bond N macam tadi, kita akan dapat N single bond N double bond O. Dia nak masukkan NO. Bila ada NO ni lah kita panggil nitroso. Dia bukanlah nitroso amine je, dia ada je lah nama dia ni. So N nitroso methyl etanamine lah kalau ikut nama penuh. Tapi awak tak perlu tahu pun nama dia. Knowing that secondary amine undergo a nitrous acid test will form nitroso compound. Nitroso ada NO macam ni. Next one untuk aromatic amine pun sama juga. Dia akan dapat nitroso Compound juga tapi aniline. So untuk secondary aliphatic and aromatic sama sahaja dia punya produk dia. Okay boleh. So untuk tertiary pula. Tertiary um, aliphatic amine. Okay tertiary aliphatic amine. We got no hydrogens available on this um, tertiary aliphatic amine. Okay tapi kita tak boleh cakap dia dapat no reactions juga. Okay untuk aliphatic we gonna get the first one the lone pair dia akan ambil hydrogen. So kita akan form this amine salt and the second one kita akan form nitroso ammonium ion. Nitroso ammonium ion you have this nitroso group and this is ammonium ion sebab ada N plus charge. So dia ambil H, dia ambil NO. So dapat dua ni. Boleh? Kalau aliphatic. Okay. Okay. Untuk aromatik pula, okay. untuk aromatik sebab dia ada benzene ring. 
Okay, and we know the NO, okay, the nitroso group yang tadi tu, dia akan carry uh, electron pair on it. Jadi, dia somehow akan bawa that character of electron withdrawing group. Okay, so the product of reactions gonna be para isomer. Para is at the locations of? 1, 4. 1, 4. Okay, sebab apa? Sebab kita tahu elektron withdrawing group yang ada banyak elektron dekat atas dia ni, dia adalah auto and para director. Okay, dia adalah auto dan para director. Bila ada benzene ring, the first carbon akan hold the uh, nitrogen. Uh, your amina. But then, uh, instead of masuk dekat auto and para, dia tak boleh masuk dekat auto. Sebab auto adalah combinations 1 and 2. Bila 1 and 2, dekat satu awak ada banyak alkyl group attached to it. Bila dekat dua, dekat, uh, diorang punya locations dekat-dekat kan? Ya. Yeah. Kan ni satu, kalau dia nak masuk dekat sini, awak akan ada steric hindrance comes from the alkyl group attached to your amine, right? Yes, yes. So, because of this bulky di diethyl di amino group, dia akan block the approach of nitrosonium ion nak masuk dekat auto position. So, dia tak akan masuk dekat auto, dia hanya masuk dekat para. Okay, so uh, tertiary aliphatic amine, dia akan dapat two separate compound. Tapi kalau untuk tertiary aromatic, kita akan dapat para dan nitroso aniline. Dia akan masuk dekat para positions. Hydrogen tadi dia tak ambil, dia hanya ambil nitroso sahaja. Okay. Okay, next, yeah, so dah dua dah reactions together with the test. Okay, next one, um, you have identification test of aniline. Okay, so uh, kalau dia kata nak bezakan aniline dengan primary aliphatic amine ke apa, kalau awak malas sangat nak fikir yang nitrous acid test tu, sebab basically nitrous acid test ke apa semua akan bagi compound sama lah. So kalau contoh awak ada primary dengan primary juga sini, Kalau tak nak guna tu, awak boleh terus guna aniline sebab aniline akan bagi positive result yang satu lagi tak akan bagi positive result. Okay, this bromine water sama tak macam dalam phenol? Dia guna bromine water juga. Kita dah jumpa banyak kan bromine water test ni. Dekat chapter 5 ada, dekat chapter 10 ada, dekat chapter 11 pun ada. Eh chapter 10 tak, chapter 8. So untuk chapter 11 ni, sebab NH2 pun sama macam uh, phenol, dia pun ada banyak elektron ke atas dia. So NH2 basically is um, electron withdrawing group juga. And electron withdrawing group is an auto and para director. Means once you undergo reactions by using this bromine water, the BR will be substituted at auto and para directions. This one is auto, ni satu, ni dua, ni satu, ni dua. So auto directions, lagi satu dia akan masuk dekat para. So what is the name of this compound? This is aniline. You have? Tribromo. 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 What about the locations? 2, 4, 6 tribromo aniline. Yes, 2, 4, 6 tribromo aniline. Okay, so once kita dah dapat this compound, sebab dia nak tengok test positive or negative results, so what kind of observations yang kita akan dapat daripada uh, this compound? White precipitate. Yes, only white precipitate form. Sama juga macam phenol. Okay, and last one, last reactions involved for this amine, is coupling reactions. So this coupling reactions takes place only on diazonium salt. Can I know from where that you get this diazonium salt, the aromatic diazonium salt? From which reactions just now? Nitrous acid test. You sure nitrous acid? Betul, let's try. Yakin lah. Betul tak? Kalau betul saya proceed. Betul. Okay tapi dia, dia akan berlaku pada any amine ke? No. No only primary aromatic amine. 
Okay. Untuk primary aromatic amines tau sebab coupling reactions hanya berlaku untuk aromatic compound. Okay. From this disonium salt, okay, kita boleh buat coupling reactions yang akan menghasilkan dye. Warna, warna-warna dye tu. Okay. Dye tu diperbuat daripada coupling reactions lah. Dia guna amine. Sebab tu kalau kita bau warna rambut, bau dia bau ammonia. Sebab dia ada amine lah dalam tu. So this disonium salt, okay, they will undergo reactions with this uh, benzene ring direct, kiranya benzene uh, derivative lah. It can be either this G sama ada dia phenol, maksudnya dia ada OH dekat sini ataupun uh, trimethyl amine. Kita akan ada N, CH2, eh, CH3, CHP. Ada S, eh, ya, dua, satu, dua, yes. So, antara dua ni sahaja sebab ni yang dalam awak punya awak punya apa tu kita panggil? Awak punya syllabus. Sebab apa kena tahu dua ni? Sebab untuk dua-dua ni kita ada observations dia. So once they undergo reactions, kita akan uh, remove HCl. Okay, remove HCl. Mana datang HCl-nya? Kita datang HCl. So kita akan dapat this N dengan N instead of having three uh, double uh, three bonds, kita akan tinggalkan dua sahaja. So bila dua, tak ada lagi lah positive charge sebab keliling N sekarang dah ada one, two, three, four, five. So zero formal charge. Yang ni pun sama. One, two, three, four, five. So kita akan hanya dapat this N double one N. When we have this N double one N, we have this azo compound. Okay, nampak tak dia masuk dekat para direction. Asalnya ini satu, sekarang ni duduk kat sini. Maksudnya dia masuk kat para kan? Dia masuk kat tepi ni. Okay, Miss. Okay. So, kalau kita tengok very detail, awak akan dapat these two compound lah. Yang ni kalau awak react dengan phenol tadi. Ni kalau awak react dengan compound, kita ada um, NN dimethyl aniline. Kalau kita react tadi. So, kalau we have this compound as our product, the observations going to be orange solid. Maksudnya, warna orange yang ada kat dye itu datang pada this uh, coupling reactions between disonium salt and also phenol. Kalau kita react disonium salt together with NN dimethyl aniline, we're going to get butter yellow azo dye. So, bila ada N double bond N ni, kita panggil dia azo compound. Okay. Itu sahaja chapter 11. Okay, so thank you everyone for today's class. Thank you, Miss. Okay.